Now it's time for you to become accessible to power. And you're going to begin by tackling dreaming. The tone of voice he used when he said dreaming made me think that he was using the word in a very particular fashion. I was pondering about a proper question to ask when he began to talk again. I've never told you about dreaming because until now I was only concerned with teaching you how to be a hunter. A hunter is not concerned with the manipulation of power, therefore his dreams are only dreams. A warrior on the other hand seeks power and one of the avenues to power is dreaming. You may say that the difference between a hunter and a warrior is that a warrior is on his way to power, while a hunter knows nothing or very little about it. The decision as who can be a warrior and who can only be a hunter is not up to us. That decision is in the realm of the powers that guide men. That's why your playing with Mescalito was such an important omen. Those forces guided you to me. They took you to that bus depot, remember? Some clown brought you to me, a perfect omen, a clown pointing you out. So I taught you how to be a hunter, and then the other perfect omen, Mescalito himself playing with you. See what I mean? His weird logic was overwhelming. His words created visions of myself succumbing to something awesome and unknown, something which I had not bargained for, in which I had not conceived even existed, even in my wildest fantasies. What do you suppose I do? Become accessible to power. Tackle your dreams. You call them dreams because you have no power. A warrior, being a man who seeks power, doesn't call them dreams. He calls them real. You mean he takes his dreams as being reality? He doesn't take anything as being anything else. What you call dreams are real for a warrior. You must understand that a warrior is not a fool. A warrior is an immaculate hunter who hunts power. He is not drunk or crazed, and he has neither the time nor the disposition to bluff, or to lie to himself, or make a wrong move. The stakes are too high for that. The stakes are his trimmed, orderly life, which he has taken so long to tighten and perfect. He's not going to throw that away by making some stupid miscalculation, by taking something for being something else. Dreaming is real for a warrior because in it he can act deliberately. He can choose and reject. He can select from a variety of items which will lead to power, and then he can manipulate them and use them, while in an ordinary dream he cannot act deliberately. Do you mean then, Don Juan, that dreaming is real? Of course it's real. As real as what we're doing now? If you want to compare things, I can say that perhaps it's more real. In dreaming, you have power. You can change things. You can find out countless concealed facts. You can control whatever you want. Don Juan's premises had always appealed to me at a certain level. I could easily understand his liking the idea that one could do anything in dreams, but I could not take him seriously. The jump was just too great. We looked at each other for a moment. His statements were insane, and yet he was, to the best of my knowledge, one of the most level-headed men I had ever met. I told him that I could not believe he took his dreams to be reality. He chuckled as if he knew the magnitude of my untenable position. He then stood up without saying a word and walked inside his house. I sat for a long time in a state of stupor until he called me to the back of his house. He had made some corn gruel and handed me a bowl. I asked him about the time when one was awake. I wanted to know if he called it anything in particular, but he did not understand or didn't want to answer. What do you call this, what we're doing now? Meaning that what we were doing was reality opposed to dreams. I call it eating, he said and contained his laughter. I call it reality, I said, because our eating is actually taking place. Dreaming also takes place, and so does hunting, walking, laughing. I did not persist in arguing. I could not, however, even if I had stretched myself beyond my limits, accept his premise. He seemed to be delighted with my despair. As soon as we had finished eating, he casually stated that we were going to go for a hike, but we were not going to roam in the desert in the manner we had done before. It's different this time. From now on, you're going to places of power. You're going to learn how to make yourself accessible to power. I again expressed my turmoil. I said I was not qualified for that endeavor. Come on, you're indulging in silly fears. 
I've been catering to your hunter's spirit. You like to roam with me in this beautiful desert. It's too late for you to quit. 